about uh, this lecture. Before that, I will re, uh, quickly I recapitulate the point that I discussed in the last class. Yesterday, we discussed the grid connection, how to feed the power to the grid. Uh, before that, uh, output voltage of the invert, pulse width modulated inverter has large number of pulses per cycle. Okay. So, if I take, take the harmonic spectrum, uh, it has a fundamental component whose frequency is same as that of the modulating wave in a sinusoidal pedulum technique. Okay. I will tell you, I will repeat, frequency, the frequency of the uh, fundamental component in the output voltage is same as that of the modulating wave. Okay. The magnitude of the fundamental component is proportional to m into V d c, where m is the modulation index, V d c is the DC link voltage. Okay. Uh, the second point that we discussed was the equivalent circuit. When I am feeding the inverter, I am feeding the power to the grid, the equivalent circuit is something like this. This is the output voltage, the fundamental component is the output voltage of the inverter. This is the fundamental component of the output voltage of the inverter. I said V in or V inverter, this is V source, this is X. Power transfer is V inverter divided into V source divided by X into sin delta, where delta is the angle between V inverter and V source. If the inverter is supplying power to the load, or if the inverter is po supplying power to the grid, V inverter leads the V source by an angle delta. Okay. Now, this is a fundamental equivalent circuit. The output voltage of the inverter has harmonics as well. Now, I will assume that grid is, grid does not have any harmonics. The harmonic equivalent circuit is going to be something like this. V inverter again, this is the harmonic voltage, this is n into x, where n is the x is the reactance at the fundamental frequency, n is the number of the harmonic. If the fifth harmonic it is 5 x, if it is seven, seventh harmonic it is 7 x, and the corresponding magnitude, corresponding magnitude. From this equivalent circuit, I can determine the current supplied to the grid and therefore, it is possible to determine the THD. I have drawn this equivalent circuit. I can draw this equivalent circuit when the frequency of both the voltages are the same. In other words, I have to connect, I have to synchronize this inverter to the grid. Now, how do I synchronize? Before doing that, I told you that the frequency of frequency of the fundamental component of the invert output voltage is same as that of the modulating wave. So, therefore, I have to generate a modulating wave okay, whose frequency is same as that of the source and it is has some phasor relationship with the source. In the sense, see here for any power transfer, the the inverter, the fundamental component of the inverter voltage should lead by an angle delta okay. and this delta will change as the power changes, as the sun's insulation changes, power input to the inverter changes and therefore, the power output. So, as the power output changes, delta should change. I am assuming that V in and V source are held constant. So, the phasor relationship of the invert output voltage, fundamental component of the invert output voltage with the source is a function of p. Okay. And I have to generate or the control circuit should generate a modulating wave whose phasor relationship I should be able to vary and it should be in synchronism with the source voltage. Okay. So, that is the requirement. So, yesterday I did discuss one uh, the so called the hardware method, 
there I have used a PLL as a multiplier. So, this is the theory behind it. See here, this is the square wave corresponds to the input grid voltage. So, the frequency of this is same as the grid voltage. So, as the frequency changes, the frequency of the square wave also will change. Okay. Now, I will divide this part into this square wave into n parts. Okay. n could be either 2, 5, 6 or 5, 1, 2 or 1, 0, 2, 4. Okay. I will digitize the sine wave and I have stored it in an EPROM. I will address this EPROM using a counter. The clock to the counter is generated using a PLL, PLL as a multiplier. So, as the frequency changes, okay, uh, the frequency of the sine wave also changes, because at any given time at steady state, at steady state these two frequencies are the same. If these two frequencies are same, supply frequency is F 1, this also is going to be F 1. So, this will be n into F 1, this will be n into F 1. So, n into F 1 is being used as a clock to the counter. So, you can generate a sinusoid using this, whose frequency is same as that of the supply. Now, how do I introduce delta? I said source volt, sorry, the inverter voltage should lead the source voltage by an angle delta. Now, depending upon the value of delta, if delta is 10 degrees, at the zero crossing of the source voltage, at the zero crossing of the source voltage, I need to address the EPROM wherein the sine 10 is stored and from there onwards I will go on increasing it. Okay. So, so I need to have a control circuit which will, which will tells me what should be the value of delta. I will use that value of delta to address the first location of the EPROM at the zero crossing. I will address that particular location of the EPROM at the zero crossing, that is all. So, that is the one way to incorporate <coughs> or that is one of the ways to generate a reference a sinusoid. What is the second method? Second method I said the software approach, PLL is as a multiplier there, here I am using again a PLL okay. and I, I gave you yesterday I discussed this harmonic oscillator. Okay, x dot is equal to omega into x, omega into y and y dot is equal to minus omega into x. So, the solution is x is equal to sin omega t and y is equal to cos omega t. Okay. Now, using this how do I generate? Mm, this is the implementation y dot integral of y, I will integrate it, I get y, y into omega is nothing but x dot, see here, y is equal to cos omega t. What is cos omega t? It is omega into x dot itself, omega into x dot itself. Okay. These are the two implementations. Omega is the instantaneous frequency. Uh, yeah. Now, software approach I will say, the software PLL. I will just show you the, show you the simulation, PLL simulation. These are the three grid voltages. These three grid voltages could be, uh, could I have harmonics, they could have a harmonics, they could be balance, unbalanced as well An ideal case is perfectly balanced and 120 degree apart. The frequencies, of course, uh, these are the grid voltages, frequency will change over a narrow band. What I will do is, I will convert these three voltages to alpha beta okay, or x component and y axis component. The frequency of E alpha, E beta is same as that of E A, B, 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 C. Okay. Then I will transform, then I will transform this alpha beta components to a synchronously rotating reference frame. The speed of the reference frame is same as that of, speed of the reference frame is same as that of the fundamental component of the grid voltage. I said grid voltage could have harmonics. Okay. So, if there are no harmonics, it is the fundamental, uh, the uh, EA, EV, EC will be pure sinusoid. So, I am rotating this reference frame, DQ frame 
whose frequency is same as that of the fundamental component of the grid voltage. Under that condition, okay, the fundamental component, fundamental co frequency component will appear as if it is a DC component and if there are harmonics there and if there are harmonics in the source voltage, they will appear as if they will appear as harmonics on a DC scale, it is something like this. In the synchronously rotating reference frame, the fundamental component will appear as DC and that DC and these are the high frequency component. I have to generate three modulating sinusoids whose frequency is same as that of the fundamental component of the grid voltage, that is the requirement. Having generated, I can incorporate delta later, that is not an issue. So, what do I need to do? I have at the synchronously rotating reference frame, I have a DC component and the DC component there could be high frequency components. I will eliminate the high frequency components by putting a small, small uh, D first order filter, okay, low pass filter. Then I get a only a constant DC. Okay. Yesterday I told you that somehow I have to generate a sinusoid which should be in phase or the D axis of D axis of the voltage space vector, D axis of the voltage space vector should be aligned with the D axis of the synchronously rotating reference frame. Okay. When that can happen? When the either the Q when the Q component is 0, the Q component is 0. So, what do I need to do? I will take, so therefore, I need to make the Q component of Q component of the voltage space vector in synchronously rotating reference frame. I will repeat, I have to make the Q component of the voltage space vector in synchronously rotating reference frame. If I do that, voltage space vector V s is aligned along with the D axis of the synchronously rotating reference frame. Okay. So, that is what I am doing here. Q yet there is something known as a notch filter, do not worry what, what exactly this notch filter does, I will explain to you sometime later. Okay. I will equate it to 0, at steady state this component goes to 0, this is a P i regulator okay, because at steady state error has to be 0. So, output of the P i regulator is nothing but the frequency of the V a V b V c itself. I okay. will just show you the the MATLAB simulation. Can I change that? I have three phase sinusoids here V A V B B C. I'll just run this. Okay, E A E B B C. A B C C D Q. Okay, then so the D or a Q or component is equated to zero here. The P I regulator. This is nothing but the harmonic oscillator. This is nothing but the harmonic oscillator. Here, sine and cos, which is generated by the harmonic oscillator. Output of the harmonic oscillator is again the input to the D and Q. See here. I can, I can gen transform alpha and beta components to DQ only when, only when I know sine theta and cos theta. See here is the transformation matrix alpha beta I can transform to d q if I know theta s, theta is the angle which the synchronously rotating reference frame makes with alpha beta. Okay. I will just run this file.
So, the first waveform is the grid voltage, second is the, the PLL output, output of the PLL, I will just explain it, I will show you. Okay. See the during the initial time, initial period, initial period, this is the grid voltage, I have just taken only one waveform okay. and this is the output of the PLL, they are not in phase. Okay. I will show you at after some time, they are perfectly in synchronism, perfectly in synchronism. So, I am able to generate three sinusoids whose frequency is same as that of the grid voltage and they are in phase. Okay. Now, I have to incorporate delta, how to incorporate delta we will see later, okay. that is not an issue. So, I have generated a sinusoid whose frequency is same as that of uh, the modulating wave. Okay. Now, what, see I will show you, this is the error, <coughs> so, this is the error. Initially, there is an error at steady state, this error becomes 0, this error becomes 0. This is nothing but the input to the PI regulator, input to the PI regulator. Okay. This is the basic block. What if source has source has the harmonics? Okay. What if the source has harmonics and what if source voltages are unbalanced? If the source voltages are unbalanced, I can divide the unbalanced voltages into positive sequence and negative sequence. Okay. The aim is to generate three phase sinusoids which are phase with in phase with the positive sequence input voltage. Somehow I have to eliminate the negative sequence component. How do I eliminate the negative sequence component? This negative sequence component, the direction of rotation of the negative sequence component is opposite to that of the positive sequence component. So, if my reference frame is rotating at at a speed corresponding to the supply frequency, grid frequency, fundamental component of the grid frequency and the direction is same as that of the positive sequence, the negative sequence component will appear as a AC component with double the supply frequency. See, I will repeat, if the speed of the DQ frame is same as that of the fundamental component of the grid voltage and the direction of rotation of DQ frame is same as that of positive sequence voltage, the negative sequence component will appear as a 100 hertz component in the synchronously rotating reference frame. A software approach to develop or uh, to generate three phase sinusoids whose frequency is same as that of the grid voltage. Okay. Uh, I discussed the basic PLL, the basic PLL in the sense there are the three phase grid voltages are purely sinusoids, they are displaced by 120 degrees. The second case I am discussing when the input voltages are unbalanced. When the input voltages are unbalanced, I can divide them into positive sequence and negative sequence. If the reference frame is rotating, uh, the reference DQ frame is rotating in the same direction as that of the positive sequence voltages. These positive sequence voltages will appear as DC, while the negative sequence components will appear as if there are 100 hertz AC. So, on a DC component, this DC component corresponds to positive sequence uh, voltage. The negative sequence of voltage will appear as 100 hertz on this DC component. So, therefore, the aim is to generate three phase sinusoids which are phase when which are phase with the positive sequence voltage therefore i have to eliminate or i have to filter this 100s component so that's the reason i'm putting a notch filter notch filter has almost zero gain offers infinite impedance for a 100s component so it allows it passes all the other frequency component and blocks 100 hertz. So, the input voltages 
or only unbalanced, I need to put a notch filter to eliminate the negative sequence component. I can put by putting a 100 hertz notch filter and rest is the same. So, I will show you the simulation. Yeah, this is the basic block, let us see, open file, open PLL. I will run this file. <coughs> Fundamental component of the supply and the PLL output. Just show you. Yeah. One second, I will show you. These are the input voltages. These are the unbal, uh, sorry, uh, this is the Harman. Wait, wait, I, I ran a different file. Sorry about that. I will show the input voltages. The input voltage is unbalanced, input voltages are unbalanced. So, there will be a positive sequence as well as a negative sequence uh, voltage, two phases of magnitude, this is the third phase. Okay. Okay, these are the input voltages A, B, C. A, B, C voltage they are converted into DQ, synchronous rotating component, Q component, is, sorry, D, whatever the component is made 0, there is a low pass filter, see here. These are the I have generated a sinusoid which is in phase with phase with the input voltage, phase with the input positive sequence voltage. So, in other words, this is a positive sequence PLL. Okay. So, if we see in the beginning, they are not in phase. Yeah, see, they are not in synchronism. After some time, it gets the synchronism. The third case that I will discuss is input could I have harmonics, input voltage could I have harmonics. What do I need to do? Assume that input voltage has fifth and seventh harmonic. Either I will filter it at the input side itself, I will take A, B, C, okay. give a AC filter the fifth harmonic and the seventh harmonic, convert into three phase to two phase, E alpha beta, then do the transformation. Else, I will convert the, the three phase voltage as it is, three to two, alpha beta, alpha beta to D to D q, then I will put a filter here to eliminate 100 hertz, sorry, the uh, I will put a low pass filter which blocks only DC and blocks which passes only DC and blocks the other frequency component. So, I need to put a DC low pass filter in the DQ frame, which is better that you need to decide. See here, I am filtering the AC components in the second case, I am putting a filter in the DQ frame. Okay. So, the pros and cons of putting the filter on the AC side and putting a filter on the DC side, you find out which is better. I would prefer to put a filter in the DC side. What will happen if I filter it on the AC side, go back to simple circuit theory and you find out. If you are not able to answer, you get back. Okay. So, I will show you that.
fifth and seventh, see fifth and seventh without filter. I will do it without filter. Okay. I will show you the input voltages, where are the input voltages, three phase, see. run this. The input voltage has harmonics. So, we will do all three cases, we will not put any filter, we will put a filter on the AC side, we will put filter on the DC side, then we will see. Okay. I will straight away, I will show you the results. Input voltages are unbalanced. Input volt, sorry, input voltage has harmonics, and see the. Will it be? Uh, see the waveform. It is not a sinusoid. It is not a perfect sinusoid. It is not a perfect sinusoid because it is not able to latch on to a component because because in the DQ reference frame it is not constant. It is continuously changing. So it somehow somehow I am not able to, it is not able to generate a sinusoid which is having a constant frequencies. So, in the second case we will put a filter and we will see. I have put a low pass filter in the DQ frame, in the DQ frame. Input has a fifth and harmonic, see the sinusoid. Sinusoid is, I have a beautiful sinusoid in phase with the fundamental component, phase with the fundamental component. Okay. I have put a filter in the DC side. Now, we will put a, put a filter on AC side. What will happen? filter on the AC side. See, there is no filter directly D, D component is made equal to 0, D or Q does not matter, it depends on what is your D and what is your Q and put a filter at the input side. See here, low pass filters I have put here, which blocks, which passes only the 50 hertz component, 250 hertz and 350 hertz components are filtered out. I put a filter on the AC side. See, output of the filter goes to ABC block. Okay, and we will see what happens to the this one. What you can observe, see here, there is a lag between, between the fundamental component. Why? Because I am filtering on the AC side. So, that is the problem. So, if I the moment do AC filtering, there is going to be a, see, first order low pass filter, what it introduces? It introduces a lag. Whereas, here I put a I am filtering at the DC side, D 
this is it. So, if you see here, even if I see, I will try to expand the lower side, lag is still there. The fundamental component is lagging the fundamental component of the input voltage. So, it is better to filter on the on the DC side. Of course, if you want to put filter on the AC side, you can go ahead, but then you need to account for this delay and it is not a big issue with the, with the DSP available. You can account for this delay introduced by the filter which is on the AC side. Okay. So, as of now, we can or we are able to generate the reference sinusoid using a hardware method or wherein I am using a PLL as a multiplier or using a harmonic oscillator and with this block diagram I can or we are able to generate three phase pure sinusoids. Okay. Now, now these, these, these sinusoids are in phase with the fundamental component of the grid voltage. For power transfer, I need to shift this waveform or this waveform should lead by an angle delta. Okay. Now, this delta information should come from the, the so called the outer loop. Okay. What is that outer loop? The outer loop is yesterday I think it did discuss, outer loop is the DC voltage regulating loop. So, it looks something like this. VDC reference and we are trying to regulate the DC link voltage. You measure the actual DC link voltage, error, PI, delta, this is delta. Why? At steady state, error is 0. That can happen when the actual DC link the actual DC link voltage is equal to the reference that can happen only when there is a perfect power balance input power is equal to input power is equal to output power plus the system losses. So, output of the PI regulator is the delta is nothing but the power angle. Okay. So, so, in the overall interface there is a we have solar panels, there is a DC to DC converter and there is an inverter, inverter feeding power to the grid. Under that condition, DC link voltage regulation is being done by the inverter control, not the DC to DC controller. That is what I told, someone asked me who is doing the voltage control, I said, we will, when, when I am doing only the DC to DC controller part, the duty cycle of the DC to DC converter is adjusted to control the output voltage. See, I will repeat, when I am doing only DC to DC converter, output voltage of the DC to DC converter is regulated by varying the duty cycle. Now, the output voltage of the DC to DC converter forms an input voltage to the inverter okay, and the power is being fed to the grid by the inverter. So, the, the overall DC link voltage control is being done by the inverter. It just monitors or it just monitors the DC link voltage and tries to control <coughs> and trying to maintain with the, the reference value. And what the DC to DC converter does? DC to DC converter, what it does is it tries to extract the maximum power, assuming there is an MPPT, tries to maximum power from the solar cell and dumps it to the DC link capacitor, that is all. So, DC link voltage regulation is being done by the inverter not by the DC to DC converter, remember that. Okay. Now, in addition, if the inverter has a spare capacity, it can supply Q. Okay. Now, I will take two cases, one is when there is no sunlight at all in the night, there is no active power transfer, there will be only a reactive power transfer. So, during reactive power transfer, since the inverter will draw a small amount of power from the grid and it will supply Q. Now, who will tell the inverter to supply, how much Q to supply okay? or how the inverter will know how much Q to supply. If the inverter is doing the load compensation okay, 
I am telling if the inverter is doing the load compensation, in other words, the entire Q is consumed by the load is being supplied by the inverter. The so called the war regulator or war control, war calculator will tell the inverter to supply the requisite amount of Q. Okay. Now, I will assume that information is coming to the inverter from other controller okay, about the quantity of Q that is to be supplied. How this inverter will, uh, will try, to try to supply the requisite amount of Q? how it can do. So, it, uh, it, it knows the reference reference value that comes from the outer controller. Okay. This quantity, the reference quantity is known, the actual quantity is actual Q is supplied by, what is actual Q? There is a source supplying load, I have an inverter, a three phase inverter Q. Okay all the Q has to supplied by this inverter to the load. So, the source is supplying only the active power. Current supplied by this induct, current flowing through the inverter will determine the Q. Q is given, what is Q here? Q is the voltage at this point. Okay multiplied by the current, angle between them is 90 degrees, if I assume, I will assume that. Okay. So, what is the current flowing through the inductor? It is nothing but V source minus V, output of the inverter V in divided by x. Okay. This, con this current is the quadrature component of current. In the, okay. output, output voltage of the inverter is proportional to M into V DC. If I keep V D C constant, if I am trying to regulate V D C constant, just by changing the modulation index, it controls Q. It controls Q. Now, how do I change the modulation index in a sinusoidal control sinusoidal PWM technique? I have to just change the model magnitude of the modulating wave. Okay. If the inverter is supplying Q to the grid, how to determine the amount of Q that has to be supplied. So, th that is being done by regulating the grid voltage to a reference value. So, what you will do is you will measure, there is a reference value, reference grid, VAC reference, actual grid voltage, PI regulator, this is Q. This is Q. Oh, sorry. I have to draw, draw again. This is a grid in water. Okay. The control loop is V A C reference. V actual A C. Actual error P I. This is Q. Why? At steady state, at steady state, why this is not coming? This is VAC reference, VAC actual actual grid voltage, error, PI, this is Q. Why it is Q? That is because at steady state, because of this PI regulator error has to be 0. That can happen only when actual grid voltage is equal to, is equal to the reference sine wave. Or sorry, reference value at the grid. If it is more than the reference, it implies that line is overcompensated. If it is less than the reference, 
it is undercompensated. So, therefore, output voltage output of the PI regulator is Q, the Q to be supplied. How the inverter changes this Q by, by changing Q is nothing but Q is proportional to M into VDC, change M. Now, when the inverter is supplying both P and Q, you need to ensure that you need to ensure that total overall rating of the inverter should be less than or equal to equal to the KVS supplied to the inverter. Sorry, KVS supplied by the inverter. I will repeat if this inverter is supplying power as well as Q, because when the when when the sun's insulation is low, power output of the solar solar panel would be low, inverter has a spare capacity, it can supply Q. Now, the sum of this P plus J Q should be equal to or should be less than or equal to the K B rating that you need to ensure that has to be incorporated in the control loop. Okay. So, that is about it. I will take few questions on grid connection PLL. Feel free if you have any questions. There is a question, can we get the MDL file for the model that is that has been shown presently. Yes, okay, fine. You will get it. Do not worry. Any other question? PHU Kamathu, go ahead. Hello, sir. Uh, uh, in a three phase, uh, we are able to understand the ABC conversion and DQ component, how the inverter is connected to the grid. But in single phase, uh, normally we do not have ABC uh, conversion. So, what are the uh, what kind of techniques that we can employ in single phase grid tie inverter? Over to you, sir. Yeah, uh, single phase grid connection inverter, I will discuss it, do not worry. I know I can understand your question, I will see, we will see. I will discuss the single phase inverter feeding power to the grid, I will discuss in the in the next half. Yeah. Uh, there is a very good question, because the single phase, how do I synchronize? How do I synchronize? There is nothing like uh, single phase PLL or so, we will see. Yeah, Amrita Koyamathur, go ahead. Good morning, sir. Ah. Uh, already the TNBE department uh, having the grid, uh, they already have. If the solar panel output that is directly connected to the grid, uh, existing one. You are saying output of the output of the solar solar panel is solar panel directly connected to the grid. So output of the solar panel is DC, I guess. There is a DC grid. No, sir. If we converted it. If we converted it to the AC, uh -huh. then we connect the output of the AC to the grid directly. That you need to answer ma'am. In the sense I told you solar panel can be considered as a small AC uh, power source. Now that source has to connect it to the grid. Can I directly connect the connect that AC source to the grid? You cannot. You have to synchronize it. You have to synchronize it. So, you have to use a PLL, you have to all those things we have to do it. If you are connecting inverter, solar inverter to the grid, grid synchronization is a must. Who will, how does the inverter know how much power to supply? So, there has to be a controller. See, we have to, the same, we have to go back to the circuit theory. Here is a source. This could be solar, V solar or V inverter, there is nothing but V inverter. This is grid, this is X. Induct two sources are interconnected through an inductor. Now, the power transfer is V1, V2 divided by X into sin delta. Okay. So, to do that, frequency of V1 and V2 should be the same. So, grid frequency continuously of course, does change. So, therefore, output voltage of the frequency of the fundamental component of the output voltage of the inverter should change and they should be in synchronism. There is no difference between the circuit theory or whatever theory that we studied for machines and for inverter feeding power to the grid, they are same. In machines, we use dark lamp method in the lab. Here, we have to generate the modulating waves in a three-phase inverter, which are 
whose frequency is same as that of the grid voltage and use those modulating wave to generate the switching signals for the inverter. Same principle of operation of generator connected to the grid and inverter feeding power to the grid, there is no difference at all. Sir, I cannot get the turn, the output of the PI controller is Q. It could be Q, is not it? In the previous case, see here. VDC reference, VDC actual, error, PI, it could be delta. Why? Because at steady state, why this is not coming? At steady state, error has to be 0 in a PR regulator. No, no, what is this? Sorry, V actual, VDC actual, error, PI, delta. Why delta? Because at steady state error has to be 0. If error is, when the error is 0, when VDC actual voltage is equal to reference, when can that happen? When there is a perfect power balance. In other words, inverter is supplying the requisite amount of power. Similarly, I have to control the uh, or I have to regulate the grid voltage at a reference value. When that can happen? When the grid gets required amount of Q. Okay, if the line is undercompensated, voltage drops. If it is overcompensated, voltage increases. That we have studied. If I am if I'm able to regulate the grid voltage at the required value, so line is compensated fully. Okay. So, here is a control loop, VAC reference, VAC reference, actual error, PI. Now, it could be either Q or M modulation index. Why? Output, uh, the, um, the inverter generates Q, which is proportional to M into VDC. If VDC is regulated at a constant value, the Q is proportional to M, that is all, because error has to be 0. That can happen only when the, the reference grid voltage is equal to the actual DC link, actual uh, line voltage, actual line voltage, V line and reference line, they are same. That can happen when the line is, gets the required amount of Q. So, therefore, output, reg output of the PI regulator could be either M or Q, that is all. Yeah. Some application of matrix converter show DC to AC conversion. In that case, we can use matrix converter for solar. No, 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 do not get into all this. Some applications of matrix converter show for DC to AC conversion. Now, I have to, for that I need to discuss what is the matrix converter. Um, you send me an email, I will answer it. See, there is a question on matrix converter. Matrix converter is nothing but AC to AC conversion. AC to AC conversion, direct AC to AC conversion. This is a basic matrix converter. There are modifications people have made and they have created an arb, a, a so called a virtual DC link. It could be possible, it is possible. Literature says it is possible, but more on that we can communicate with each other rather than answering it in this forum. Suppose the inverter is providing real power exchange and reactive power application, how can we decide the value of coupling inductor? Oh, okay, there is a good question. Suppose the inverter is providing real power exchange and reactive power compensation, how can we decide the value of coupling inductor? Mm. There are there are two three issues. One is one is the value of inductor is determined by the THD because for a given switching frequency, inverter has a frequent fixed harmonic spectrum, okay, uh, and based on the magnitude of the output voltage of the 
in, in water, the current, the inductor will determine the current pumped in to the grid. So, x I can determine. Now, higher the value of x, higher the value of x, lower will be the value of THD, okay, because this is the equivalent circuit. Higher the value of x, slower is the response. Higher the value of x, slower is the response. Why? This is V source this is V in, V in minus phasor V source divided by x is the current. Higher the value of x, slower, because slower is going to be the response, current cannot change instantaneously in an inductor. Okay? So, if you want to have a very fast response, because see, Q can change instantaneously. Q of the load can change instantaneously because you have gone and put on the load which is high Q load that Q has to come from the, from the inverter. So, that immediately the quadrature component of the current has to flow through this. Okay? If you have a large inductor, it may not allow that current to change, your response deteriorates. Yeah. So, the value of x depends on the how fast is your system should respond and what should be the THD. These are the two basic parameters, then size, cost and other things also will come. Sir, the question is, could you please give some reference material or books on the power grid connections which you are explaining now? Oh, oh there is enough material, maybe I will try to give, but then remember, there is absolutely no difference between the basic circuit theory that you have studied while doing synchronous machine power uh, synchronous machine feeding power to the grid and inverter supplying power to the grid only thing is that is rotating machine inverter is as a static device that's all that's all now only thing is i have to generate see i have to generate output voltage of the inverter of the required frequency that i have to generate using a modulating wave in a sinusoidal pdlm technique or i need to use a space vector pdlm technique Modulating how to generate, I have discussed. Material, maybe I will try to give you, do not worry. What are the factors to cause loss of synchronism with the inverter with the grid? What are the factors to which causes loss of synchronism of inverter with the grid? I, I, I do not know. I do not know. What are the factors to cause loss of synchronism of the inverter with the grid? Hmm. In the means, it, it see the loss of synchronism can happen when the PLL goes out of synchronism. See here, the loss of synchronism can happen when PLL is out of sync with the with the grid voltage. When the PLL is goes out of sync, that can happen in many times. Suppose there is an un, you have designed a PLL, you have designed a PLL. Assume that grid is perfectly balanced. Under that condition, you do not put a notch filter, a 100 hertz notch filter in the DQ frame. Okay? Now, the grid is unbalanced. What can happen? Now, there is a, a DC, uh, there is an unbalanced negative sequence voltage which appears as a 100 hertz component in the DQ frame okay? and the PLL may go out of sync. If the PLL goes out of synchronism, Yes, the inverter goes out of synchronism. Okay, that could be that is one of the reasons. There could be other reasons as well, say, which I have to find out. Okay. So, if the inverter, if the PLL is in synchronism, I do not see any other reasons of inverter going out of synchronism. Of course, I am assuming that powers the total. Q total S supplied by the inverter is less than or equal to its rating. Yeah. Sir, if the error is 0, the inverter is supplying S only. When there is an error, inverter supplies both P and Q. What does it mean? I do not know. Go to ABVC. Sir, previously told the error between the V actual and V reference. V, v. Ah. Sir, when the 
S S S S it is it's going supply into Q. So if it has some error, it need to balance the grid supply and the inverter supply. So it is going to compensate that voltage level by its own Q or it requires any any special kind of attention. This is a grid. That voltage has to be regulated. How do you regulate that voltage? Why this voltage is falling? Or why the voltage is increasing? Voltage at this point can increase or decrease only based on Q. Yes, compensation. Now you are trying to regulate when 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 this volt line voltage is actual voltage is equal to the reference. When it required when it receives the required amount of Q, who supplies Q? Inverter. I am assuming that inverter has the infinite capacity to supply this Q. If the required Q is higher than the rating, yes, you, are not, you will not be able to regulate. Koyamutar, if the KVA rating of the inverter is less than Q required by the line, then it will not be able to regulate the grid voltage. If the inverter rating is higher than the Q required by the low by the line, it can supply the Q Q demand and therefore trying to maintain the voltage. Sir, how does a DC to DC converter help in maximum power transfer, sir? DC to DC converter, DC to DC converter. What is the control variable there? Duty cycle. Duty cycle. How do you choose the duty cycle? How will you choose the duty cycle? You choose the duty cycle such that maximum power is being drawn from the solar cell. That is all. As the duty cycle changes, okay, current drawn from this also will change, is not it? So, therefore, I can change the operating point. In fact, D is determined by output of the MPPT. Output of the MPPT will determine D duty cycle of for this DC to DC. Your last question I will take, NIT Warangal is already time. Yeah. Uh, sir, what will be the effect of the transformer connected to the inverter, sir? Huh? I think we will be connecting a transformer also after the inverter. Uh, when huh? We will connect a transformer after the inverter and connect it to the grid. So, what will be the effect of the transformer uh, on the performance? Yeah, I do not. There are trans. There see a question. I will answer it. There are uh, in the in my next lecture. There are there are inverter configuration with con transformer, and there are inverter configuration without transformer. Depending upon the output voltage of the inverter and the grid voltage. Okay. Yes. If the if for high power application, transformer is a must because you need to isolate isolate high from the grid uh, your inverter from the grid. You need to have an inverter. You need to have a transformer that transformer is nothing but a 50 hertz transformer it is a 50 hertz con conventional transformer okay so it is a not a must that all the topologies will have a transformer there are topologies where there is no transformer we will discuss it now yeah anything else? so last one question yeah. sir hvdc transmission can we directly connect this inverter uh, and transmit using hvdc no, I am asking sir, inverters uh, suppose using solar, ah. uh, can we directly uh, transmit it to for long distance, long distance just like a HVDC how we do it sir. Now, I got your question in the sense, uh, mm, yeah I think maybe on my last lecture that is why I said different school of thought. In my introductory lecture I, I, I told you that the conventional school of thought is solar panel, DC to DC, DC to AC grid. Okay. Can we have a different school of thought? That is what that is what I had told you. Let us see, can we have a DC grid and distribute it? That is what I have told you. We will discuss tomorrow. Why HVDC? First, let us talk about low voltage DC, then we will go to HVDC. I have almost finished my uh, grid connection. Mm -hmm.